Okay, welcome back everyone. So this is lecture number three. Now in this lecture, we want to talk about real number operations and uh, properties. Okay, so f first thing I want to talk about is the order, the order of numbers on the number line. So when we say A is less than B, that means on the number line, A lies to the left of B, right? A is less than B. So that's how we show that relationship using the inequality symbol. If A, here A and B are numbers, by the way. Okay, these are real numbers. If A is to the right of B, then A is greater than B. So A is greater than B, and on the number line, here's B, here's A. This time, A is greater than B. Okay, now... Um, let's see yeah that, that would work so for example if i have three is greater than seven on the number line this is three there is seven so seven lies to the right of three okay now we use inequality symbols to show relationship between numbers now there are five inequality symbols the not equal symbol for example four does not equal to five and then we have the less than symbol. Four is less than five. Then we have the greater than symbol. Uh, seven is greater than two. We have the less than or equal to symbol. So for instance, four is less than or equal to five. Now this, this statement is true. Four is less than or equal to five. Uh, the reason is because the way we we say this expression 4 is less than or equal to 5 well and it has to do with this this what we call the disjunction or in in the field of logic a disjunction is a phrase a statement that joins two two statements that are joined by keyword or it's called the disjunction and in order for the disjunction for a statement like this to be true uh, only one part first part or the second part of that has to be true so if i think of first part as p second part as q i have p or q and this is a logical or that we're talking about okay so p or q this statement is true always the only time p or q is false is if both p and q are false other times uh, this would be a true conjecture true statement so let's check out this one for instance as far as uh, the truth or fallacy of this statement four is less than five correct so that is true four equals to five well that part of the statement is false but then we have true or false so in the field of logic that whole statement that proposition is going to be a true proposition and there we have it so it's for the reason uh, this is a true statement four is less than or equal to five now getting past that and the next inequality symbol is going to be uh, greater than or equal so I can say, for instance, that 10 is greater than or equal to 7. Again, we know it's not equal to, the, but the fact that it's greater than works out. Okay. Now, next, let's talk about uh, the absolute value of a number. If you recall, absolute value of a number is the distance away from 0. Okay, so we're looking at absolute value now. The, uh, the absolute value of A, for instance. So here's the number line. This is the center zero. Um, and A could be to the right or to the left. Well, let me, let me actually put a number here. Absolute value of five. Means how far is number five away from zero? So this distance from here to here. This distance between zero and five represents absolute value of 5, which is simply 5. 
Now in negative 5, and negative 5 will also be 5 units away from 5, wouldn't it? If we didn't care about direction, see this distance is exactly the same as this distance. So absolute value of negative 5 is also equal to what we just showed, which is 5. Therefore, when we talk about the absolute value of any number, it means uh, the distance of that number away from 0, regardless of direction. Okay. So, now because, again, distance cannot be negative, the absolute value of A is always positive, or 0 is the lowest it can be. Now, we can represent the absolute value of a number this way, absolute value of A. We can write the two-part two part definition of absolute value. The absolute value of any number is a number itself, if the number is positive or zero. But if the number is negative, then we have to put negative of the number in order to force it to become positive if the number is negative. So for instance, absolute value of negative 8, a here, this is a, a is negative 8. So um, if I just put a negative 8, that is incorrect, right? I cannot just repeat a here. So that's why we have this part. If the number we are working with is negative, then we need to do negative of that. Double negative makes positive, and now the answer is what we want it to be. We want to force this to be positive. So this is how we're going to remember our absolute value of a number. It could be A or negative A, depending on uh, what A is. As far as properties of absolute value goes, uh, let's look at some properties here. Okay, so the first property uh, is that absolute value of A is at least a zero, right? Absolute value of a number is positive or zero. That's by definition of absolute value, okay? <clears throat> absolute value of negative A is exactly the same as absolute value of A. Because ultimately the answer, the answer is going to be positive. What if I'm multiplying two absolute values? of a times b well that's going to be absolute value of their product so we can actually uh, combine two absolute values in the form of a product or we can break them off into a product of two factors two numbers um, what if i have a quotient so for example absolute value of a over absolute value of b well we can combine these into one absolute value of a over b and of course b may not be zero right and uh, i believe there's one more let's say i got this one i got the product quotient oh let's look at the uh, triangle inequality this one is cool absolute value of a plus b is going to be less than or equal to absolute value of a plus absolute value of b okay so what we're saying here is that the absolute value of the sum of two real numbers is less than or equal to the sum of their absolute values. Okay? So that's what we're saying with this one. And you can see, for example, absolute value of uh, 7 plus negative 9. Well, 7 plus negative 9 is negative 2. Absolute value of that is 2, isn't it? Now let's look at individually absolute value of 7 plus absolute value of negative 9. Absolute value of 7 is 7. Absolute value of negative 9 is 9. 2 is less than or equal to 16. You see how that works? So that's really cool inequality. I like that one. Okay. And uh, so there we have uh, what you call it. And that's what we have as far as properties of absolute values go okay and uh, as far as the operation goes i can think of operation like addition subtraction multiplication division with real numbers right uh, 
Uh, so those are the operations, the basic operations. Uh, the operations again are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. There you go. Uh, yeah, so these operation with real numbers, I'm sure everybody knows about those. So I'm just going to not spend any any time on that. Now let's, um, what I want to talk about next, other than these operations, uh, let's talk about divisions that involve zero with real numbers. Okay, so let me just write that, what I'm about to talk about. We're, I'm looking at division involving zero okay so suppose here i have a and a cannot be zero okay oh yeah uh, let's say a is not zero so a over zero is undefined we cannot divide by zero okay that's undefined now zero divided by any non-zero number is zero and zero divided by zero itself would be indeterminate So let me now clarify the reason for these. Uh, to, to clarify these, I'm going to start with something simple. Simple. Let's say 10 divided by 2 is 5. We know that. And one way we can verify the result of a division is to multiply the answer by the divisor for the denominator. 10 divided by 2 is 5 because 10 can be written as 2 times 5. True. Now, <clears throat> let's say here, um, I'm looking at A over 0. I want to see why that is undefined. Okay, so if I do A divided by 0, and suppose there is an answer to it, I'm going to put question mark. Then based on what I just said here, if this had an answer, that means I can multiply 0 times the answer, right? Times that answer and that should equal to a but the question remains well zero times what becomes a non-zero a remember a is non-zero here a is non-zero anything but zero so this can't be this cannot happen so it's for that reason we say division by zero is undefined okay let's look at zero now divided by a is zero and the reason for this again is because let me use uh, actually maybe a different color because we got two zeros here so if i multiply let's see the reason this works the answer is zero is because we can write the numerator as a times zero correct the answer to the to the division problem quotient now this is true isn't it any number times zero is zero so for that reason this property holds zero divided by any number is zero because it is possible to do this now let's take a look at zero divided by zero the last formation uh, and why is that indeterminate indeterminate so let's take a look at and i'm going to go zero uh, just to differentiate between the two zeros and suppose again this does have an answer if zero divided by zero has an answer then that means i can multiply denominator times the answer and that should give me what the numerator right the red zero this one okay now take a look at this expression zero times what number is zero zero times what number makes zero so for instance zero times five isn't zero times five zero okay so it works notice we can actually find values that work what about zero times three well that's zero so zero equals zero so i found two numbers that work well it turns out there are infinitely many numbers zero times pi isn't that zero 
so pi works therefore there are infinitely many choices that you can do zero divided by zero and get an answer so it is for that reason we call it indeterminate meaning you it cannot be determined so they are undefined both of these in a way are undefined for a different reason one of them can't happen the one i just erased the other one it could happen but they just don't have a unique answer there are just too many answers that work and you're looking at those answers so it is for those reasons that uh, we cannot divide by zero zero divided by zero cannot be done and division by zero is undefined okay now when it comes to signed numbers uh, let's say when we multiply positive number times positive number remember the product would be positive a positive times negative product would be negative a negative number times a positive number the product would be negative and two negative numbers multiply to a positive number okay remember we this is just a review of uh of our basic uh algebra and there we have that one um this is the same holds with division by the way positive divide by positive that's going to be positive a positive divide by a negative is negative negative divide by positive is negative and negative divide by a negative is positive all right and of course this holds because division can be viewed as a multiplication with reciprocal so just about everything that holds for multiplication holds for division also the properties all right next let's talk about let's talk about exponential notations okay now anytime we have repeated multiplication so i'm talking about exponential notation okay uh, anytime we have repeated multiplication like two by two by two by two we can rewrite this as two to the fourth power repeated multiplication of a same number by itself this is called the exponential form of of that product and of course the answer is what 16 whatever that is but this is the exponential form the two to the fourth power now in the exponential form two is called the base four is called the exponent or the power okay and uh, four the exponent tells us uh, the exponent or the power tells us the multiplicity of the base and that means how many times the base multiplies by itself two to the fourth means two multiplies by itself four times now in general if i have a times a times a dot 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 times a and suppose i'm doing this n times so i have n factors because numbers multiply together we call them factors i can write this as a to the n and this is called the exponential form of that product and we read it as a to the nth power or simply a to the nth that's how we read it so exponential notation is simply repeated multiplication that's all that is now <clears throat> so for instance for instance let's say an example i have negative five squared well repeated multiplication that's negative five times negative five which is 25 positive okay what if i have three times five cubed well three times five cubed and now five cubed is going to be five times five times five right of course that's 125 and three times 125 is going to be about 375 so that's what exponential notation is 
Now, having talked about exponential notation, we can talk about order of operations now. The order of operations with real numbers. Now, here we're talking about, well, what is the priority of operations? Which one has the highest priority? I know a lot of you uh, recall the PEMDAS, right? And that is truly the order of operation. Of course, we're going to paraphrase this uh, in a few moments and write it down. So the P here stands for parentheses. Okay. Uh, parentheses. E stands for exponents. M is multiplication. D is division. And then A for addition. S for subtraction. Okay. So now the parentheses are example of what more general class of grouping symbols is what we call them. So in general, your grouping symbols uh, go first or execute at first, the order of operation. Highest priority is given to grouping symbols. Parentheses are one of them. We could have brackets uh, or braces, any one of those. Okay, so square brackets is what this one is. And that's what that is. So any grouping symbol, again, that's what those are. We could have absolute values or fraction bars, uh, percent, all of those. <clears throat> but for now, our grouping symbols, we're just going to focus on parentheses, square brackets, and braces. Okay. Now, um, so we're going to do grouping symbol first, then it's exponents. Then the order of operation goes multiplication, division. Now, multiplication and division have the same priority of operations. Therefore, if they do appear in a statement, we usually use the left to right rule. So the arrow above MD from going from left to right is just that, left to right. Addition, subtraction are equally as important. And we're going to put, again, uh, a left to right rule for that one so they're equally as important so we look at them in the order of their appearance okay and uh, so that's going to be uh, what the order of operation is going to be for us okay so let's let's take a look at uh, an example here okay in this example that I'm making up suppose I have 8 plus 6 and then we're going to divide this by 7 times 3 minus 6. So notice in this, in this specific statement or expression, I have a grouping symbol, parentheses. We have addition, we have subtraction, we have division, we have multiplication. I only don't have exponentiation. I don't have exponents. So we're going to follow PEMDAS. Okay. So it's really... GEMDAS, right? If you think of grouping symbol first, followed by exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, all of these left to right, both of these left to right, there's your GEMDAS grouping symbols. Now, so I'm going to do within parentheses first. Within parentheses is 14, and once we resolve that sum, 14, we no longer need parentheses. We can freely move parentheses as long as there's nothing outside parentheses, right? Otherwise, we have to do distributive property. So here's parentheses divided by 7 times 3 minus 6. Now, multiplication division, left to right. So that means I have to do 14 divided by 7. That's 2. Then multiply by 3 minus 6. 2 times 3, 6 minus 6. The answer is 0. Okay, so that would be the order of operation there. The note, if I didn't do order of operation properly, let's say the spot where I have 14 divided by 7 times 3. If I did multiplication first, I would get 21. 14 divided by 21 minus 6. 
well 14 divided by 21 minus 6 will not equal to 0 right so this is in correct when you have division multiplication you have to do left to right rule okay and in fact this is uh, everyone has agreed to this all over the world and even of course the the computers are programmed to follow this order of operations as well okay so there we have something a simple order of operations now um let's see uh, the other thing that i want to talk about here uh, let's talk about some properties of real numbers now okay we talked about order of operations <clears throat> now we're going to talk about properties of real numbers real numbers so uh here suppose we have i'm going to use the abc's okay so the first property a plus b okay the first property is what we call the closure property the closure property says <clears throat> that a plus b if here let me say a b c are real numbers so we have established that then a plus b is also real and so is a times b so both of these are real and this is called closure property okay or properties because it's for addition multiplication the closure property guarantees that um, anytime you add and multiply numbers together there will be another number waiting for it we're never going to run out of numbers next we look at the commutative property let's take a look at the commutative property so with the commutative property a plus b is equal to b plus a okay so the commutative property tells us that the sum and also the product a b is b a this is the commutative 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 you say it faster it's easier the commutative property so commutative property a plus b b plus a are the same a b b a are the same so i guess here you can multiply and add in any order right regardless of the order and the next property uh commonly we call is the what we call the associative property the associative property allows us to change the grouping so for instance instead of doing a plus b on the left i can do b plus c on the right instead of multiplying a b then the product by c i can do a times b c <clears throat> and the reason is sometimes it's easier to do that right so for example suppose i have 5 plus 11 plus 9 like that i could do 5 plus 11 16 plus 9 but i can see that 11 and 9 add together rather easily see that <clears throat> so it's easier to add 11 and 9 first so we are allowed to do that and the result of course is going to be 25 however i do it so that's just illustration of when i want to do something like this with numbers anyway this works with uh, mathematical expressions as well sometimes it's easier to combine algebraic expressions in a different order abc for example let's say i'm doing seven times uh five times one seventh right or actually since i'm doing this in the order abc so i have abc seven five one fifth well do seven seven times five instead of doing left to right i can do seven times multiply five times one fifth now five times one fifth reciprocal multiply to one and that's just going to be seven you see that so again depends on what we want to do with the property 
So this one again was the associative property, just so you have the name down. Associative property. Okay, and then we have that one. Next, we're going to talk about, uh, let's talk about the identity property. Identity. So with identity property now, <clears throat> A plus zero is A. That means um, zero plus any number gives you the number itself. And doesn't matter whether you do zero plus A, A plus zero. We have that sum. Zero plus any number is number itself. So the identity property tells us that there exists a unique real number zero. There's only one. Zero is the identity element of addition. <clears throat> it's a unique number that you add to A and you get the number itself back. Okay. With respect to multiplication, the identity element of multiplication is one. There is a number one so that you multiply it by any number, you get the number itself such that one by a or a by one gives you the number itself there so this is again the identity property of multiplication there exists a unique real number one so that a times one one times a gives you the number back uh next let's talk about the inverse property With inverse property, or let's say, let's go properties here, because I'm going to have two of them. In the inverse of addition, additive inverse, we call it. Negative A is the additive inverse of A. That means there exists a unique number now, negative A, so that when you add it to A, you get zero, right? The identity element of addition. And that minus a plus a is also zero. Okay. Now, if a itself is in zero, we can take this to multiplication. The inverse property of multiplication, again, there is a unique number, this time one over a, so that you multiply by a, you get one. Or one over a times a gives you one. These are the inverses. <clears throat> In the case of addition, the inverse element is negative A. In case of multiplication, the inverse is 1 over A. We call that reciprocal also. 1 over A reciprocal. Opposite of A was negative A. So that would be the inverse of A, or its opposite. And... Uh, <clears throat> Let's say next one, if I remember, is distributive property. And this one, um, we're looking at distributive property of multiplication over addition. It goes like this. A times B could be plus or minus, doesn't matter. Um, A times B plus C within parentheses, you distribute A onto B. Add or subtract, depending on what we're doing in parentheses, A times C. So we distribute multiplication again over addition. The product of a real number and the sum or difference of two real numbers, in this case, will equal to um, what you call it. It would be equal to the product of the first number, products of the first number and each of the other numbers. Now, uh, let's, let's finish this one, the last, and that would be enough for the properties. Uh, multiplication property of zero. And you can kind of guess that one. Multiplication property of zero. Zero times any number is zero. Number times any number times zero is zero. So there we have that. <coughs> right the product of a real number and zero is zero doesn't matter how we multiply them but that's what that is okay so i think that's 
that's about it. So let's take a look at some examples of, of this and then we'll be done with this lecture. So some examples here. Uh, let's say, going back to our absolute values, absolute value of 25 equal absolute value of negative 25, right? That would be a true statement. The answer is 25. What if I have some statement like this? Absolute value of negative 8 is less than or equal to 0. <clears throat> this would be, of course, false, wouldn't it? Because absolute value of negative 8 is 8, and 8 does not equal to, nor is it less than 0. So that is false. Uh, so that's just with the absolute values. Um, let's see what else we want to do. Uh, let's, well, let's do a subtraction. So for example, let me make something here. Suppose I want to do 9 tenths minus negative 4 thirds, something like that. Now, double negative makes positive, so we have 9 tenths plus 4 thirds. And of course, we cannot combine here unless we have LCD. The LCD of 3 and 10 would be 30. So that means I need to build each fraction to 30. Multiply top bottom of the first by 3. Multiply top bottom of the second one by 10. And that makes it 27 plus 40 divided by 30. That makes it 67 over 30. And there you have that one. I don't think you can reduce this one because 67 is prime. <clears throat> okay, now let's do a multiplication. We're looking at signed numbers here. So let's say I want to do negative 5 halves. Let me times it by negative, I don't know, 12, um, 25th. Something works with 5 nicely. Okay, so to do this one, again, negative times negative, the product would be positive. 5 times 12, 2 times 25. We can reduce these, and the result is simply 6 fifths. There's the answer. Let's see, how about if I do, let's do something with 0. Uh, my next example, what about 0 over negative 4? Again, as long as the denominator is not zero, this will be zero. What if I have four divided by zero? Remember, division by zero is undefined. And there you go. So num this one would be undefined. Uh, how about, how about, what if we do a fraction divided by a fraction? Suppose I do, 12 thirteenths divided by negative 3 quarters. So for this one, the way to divide two fractions, this is what we call, by the way, a complex fraction. A complex fraction is any time you have a fraction divided by another fraction or a whole number. Okay, so that's what uh, a complex fraction is going to be. So how are we going to handle the complex fraction? We write the first fraction, that's 12 thirteenths, times, we flip and multiply, or they call it invert and multiply. And there you go. Again, there's no commonality top and the bottom. A positive fraction, first one, times second fraction is negative. The product would be negative. 12 times 4, that would be 48 divided by 39. And there you have it. So that's to divide uh, complex fractions together. How about, well, let's do exponents. Okay, with exponents, suppose I want to do negative 3 to the 4th. And then separately, I'm going to do negative 3 to the 4th this way. See the difference between them. Now, the first one, negative 3 to the 4th. So if you hide the negative 3, 
and just look at 3 to the 4th. This is how that expression is rewritten, and that's the intent for the way it's written. This is what it means to write it like that. Now, uh, this is going to give me 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that's 81. So it's negative 81. Okay, negative 81. Now, negative 3 to the 4th power this one because negative 3 is in parentheses so if i write this as in repeated multiplication it's going to be negative 3 negative 3 multiplied by itself four times and this time uh, multiply by itself the answer is going to be positive 81. so you see the difference between them one of them the answer is positive the answer is negative so it makes a difference whether the number is in parentheses or not when we use negative in front of a number. All right, so let's now take a look at another example. This example, I'm going to do negative 4 times 9 minus 8, for instance, something with order of operation. Let's do negative 7 times uh, uh, 2 cubed. There. So, order of operation, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponent, and so on. So, I need to do within parentheses the 9 minus 8. So, that's going to be negative 4. 9 minus 8 is 1. So, the parentheses is done. Next, we move to exponents, 2 cubed. That would be 8. Now, 4, parentheses, 1. Remember, that's implied multiplication 4 times 1, and here times 8 negative 7 by 8. So we, I have a multiplication here, multiplication here. Let's do those first. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Plus negative 7 times 8 is negative 56. And now we can combine those two. Negative 56 plus negative 4, that's going to be negative 60. And there we have that one. Okay, and that would be an, a simple example of order of operations, of course. Um, uh, let's see, let's do one more order of operation. And I think um, once we do that one, then um, we are pretty much done with this lecture. That's all I wanted to talk about as far as operation with real numbers goes. So let's take a look at our last order of operations. Say I have negative 8 plus uh, negative 4 times negative 6 divided by 12. And let's divide all that by 4 minus negative 3. So we're going to handle the top and the bottom differently. I mean, not differently, but separately, I meant. So let's to do the denominators easier. The denominator... We have double negative, that makes positive, so that's 4 plus 3, and that is 7. There. So the denominator is resolved. Now, in the numerator, we have, although we have parentheses, but notice there are no operations inside. I don't, I'm not adding, subtract, multiply, dividing within the parentheses, right? It's just a negative number in parentheses. So, we do have a multiplication here and a division here, right? We're going to do those left to right. So first, multiplication. Negative times negative is positive. So that's going to be 24. And then we do 24 divided by 12. 24 divided by 12 is 2. And the last step is to do in the denominator, negative 8 and 2 makes negative 6 over 7. And there is the result of this one. Okay. So, again, just wanted to go through and show you some order of operations here. Hopefully this help um, bring back um, whatever you may have forgotten uh, about order of operations. And with that, we are done with uh, this lecture. Again, thank you for watching, everyone.